Today I show you how I messed up my very first epoxy project and lost about a thousand dollars along the way, what I learned from my mistakes and how I still managed to make the best of it. Enjoy! It all started way back in September of last year with this extremely beautiful $400 sport beach slab. Gosh, what a ridiculous figure. I got really lucky with this purchase. First point on my agenda was to cut the slab in half. I will post a separate Maths for Woodworkers episode on the subject in the future, but here's the main idea in short form. First mark the center of various distances along the length of the board. Then simply average all the points and connect the dots into a line. It's that easy and really effective too. Then I use my circular saw to cut the wood along the line, making sure I take several passes. Even though Sporter Beach is rather soft, I still wanted to make sure that I don't overload my power tool when cutting a 5cm thick slab. God damn, these moves! Next came planing the two parts to exactly the same thickness, revealing a beautiful mid surface in the process. This piece of lumber, this piece of lumber, god damn it. Looking pretty fine already. Um, both sides turned out very nicely. No planner snipe, not in the least bit. I did a very good job with my sled and keeping everything nice and square to my sled. But other than that, the result looks pretty fine. Now for the other side and then we are good to go to proceed further with creating the mold, taking exact measurements and all of that. So that's definitely gonna do it for those pieces of wood. Looking pretty nice. I can't wait to finish it at some point. I seriously can't wait. I'm so excited. God damn it, this wood is so freaking astonishing. Looking so fresh. Now for the next step. Now we prepare the mold. I took a big melanin coated MDF board and measured the dimensions we needed after placing the slab halves the way I liked it the most. Then I cut all pieces to size using various saws I had at my disposal. And after that came the first terrible part of the project. Just watch and you'll see why. Creating this mold was the worst experience I had all day. Seriously, such a hassle. Um, I didn't bring the right size of nails with me. Then I had to use this, these way too long ones. And now I know why people usually use um, nail cannons, um, those nail shooters to create molds. That was just a fucking pain in the ass and I'm never going to do that again. Never ever in my life. But never mind, we are done with the mold. Now I hope it does work out. Now I'm going to um, patch everything up with silicone and yeah, then I'm going to use epoxy on the life edge to basically make the epoxy um, stick better to the wood later in the game. No matter the struggles, it worked out somehow, so let's seal the mold with silicone. Quick tip, to spread the silicone easily, make sure to spray a mix of water and dish soap over it. This way it won't stick to your fingers and can be pressed into all cracks and corners without any kind of problem. After that came my calculation of the amount of epoxy I needed for the pour. Separate episodes of Maths for Woodworkers will cover various methods to calculate the amount, so I won't get into too much detail here. And once that was done, I sanded the live edges with an 80 grit to make sure the epoxy binds with the wood better. Attaching the mold with some double sided tape. I then proceeded to seal off the live edge with clear epoxy. That step was important, such that we don't have bubbles inside the main pour and staining of the wood with black epoxy. 
But this step also was my greatest mistake, which ruined the whole piece. Can you guess why? Just a hint, you'll see the devastation later anyways. I forgot to seal off the end crane, the most important part of it all. Next day, and I prepared the slab a tiny little bit more, for the main pour by roughing the clear epoxy for a better bond and removing some rot with my Dremel. Once that was finally done, it was time to pour my river. 12 liters of epoxy is what I calculated, all mixed with black pigment paste. Holy shit! All still went well up to this point, but then disaster struck when I had a brilliant idea to try and move the whole mold inside due to low outer temperatures in the fall. Spoiler alert, it went miserably. In which world did I assume you could move a huge pot full of liquid epoxy without it spilling all over the place? I lost about 2 liters of resin that day and had to do another pour. Not only did I lose money that day, I also stained all of the wood with black epoxy, which will lead to a huge loss of slab thickness later in the project. A few days later I was able to release the tabletop from the mold, which was quite a ride, but it worked out quite nicely at the very end. <laughs> Later that day I then began to flatten the board a bit with my jig made from aluminum extrusions and my palm router. And I also was a bit curious about how the slab would look once I finish it, so I water popped a sanded part a bit. Then winter arrived and it was too cold at my old shed to work further on the project. So I waited till mid of December to continue my work. Flattening the slab was still the main point currently on my agenda, so I continued by hand at first and once one side was completely flat, I went over to my CNC to make life easier for me. But this is the point where I finally realized just how bad my previous decisions influenced the quality of the tabletop. So my CNC did an absolutely gorgeous job with um, flattening the main side, but I have a big fucking problem now, a big big oopsie that um, I just now realized. I was wondering why there were so many ripples on top of my epoxy, um, on, the, on the top. And what I realized by now is that a lot, a lot of bubbles have formed, probably due to the low temperatures down there in the basement um, on the second pour. This fucking sucks. Um, also, um, our failed attempt to transport the epoxy led us to um, yeah, having a lot of staining here. Um, and the staining goes pretty damn deep. So I probably need to take off 
half a centimeter more to get rid of all the bubbles and the like or to, to at least get the bubbles open and then I can fill it with new epoxy. I don't know, but for now I'm going to send it and see how it looks after sending. I'm just curious and tomorrow I will be back and try to um, also get the rest of the backside flat, completely flat and without any staining and the like. Well, there's a lot more to epoxy than just pouring and being done. It's pretty damn complicated. This is why I was always afraid of epoxy, you could say, because um, it's terribly expensive and if something goes wrong, you're pretty damn fucked. But it's wood, you can fix it somehow and I'm going to fix it in some kind of way. At least I'm going to try my best. The next day. So I've sanded everything with an 80 grit, just a tiny little bit. Um, I got rid of all the epoxy dust and now I'm just going to see how it looks with, with just a bit of olive oil. Um, yeah, let's see how it would look um, at the very end, even with the bubbles. I'm pretty interested in that. But I don't have, have the intention of keeping the bubbles, obviously. I would like to have a table, which looks good. But why can you see them so clearly when there's no finish on it? That is so curious. But right now, I actually can see the bubbles. The only thing I can really see is the staining that is going on here. Um, so I definitely need to shave this down a bit more until I don't have any of this left. But other than that, I honestly can't see the bubbles, which is a really good sign, I suppose. I'm going to add a bit more of the olive oil. I'm going to rub it in and then I'm going to let it stand up until tomorrow. And then I will see if you can seriously see the bubbles if after putting so much finish on it or if it's actually bearable. So next day and yeah, what can I say? This part right here, coarse. Um, 80 grit with the sanding paper and you can actually, it doesn't matter which angle, not see that there are bubbles underneath. Um, but 80 grit is way too coarse. I mean it looks nice and matte but it just doesn't feel nice. Um, this is why I tried it out with 320 paper and you can already see it in the video file that you can definitely see well <laughs> The bubbles which kind of sucks and I think I've made a decision The side that was supposed to go on top at first is going to go to the bottom I'm going to leave it how it is these epoxy stained parts won't be very visible due to the um, legs of the of the table overall, so those aren't a problem and I don't want to shave too much off from the desk anymore. So yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it around and then I'm going to use my Shapeoko on the other side and then I think we can call this one quits. Um, it's the downside, no one's going to see this side, um, it's not going to be visible and it's not for sale. So yeah, that, that was my first bigger epoxy pour and I still want to try to make something nice out of it. So it literally took me the last four days to shave off this table. As you might notice, it's only half its thickness anymore. Uh, it's, it's seriously terrible. It hurts my heart, it hurts my, <laughs> my wallet to see this, but I just had to do it. It's still not perfect. I can still see a lot of epoxy shining through. Um, I know, the beach is just so soft due to the spalting process that it seems like the epoxy went through the whole wood at some point, at least in some spots. And I just can't bear to shave off anything anymore. This is why I'm going to use it like this and well, this is by far the biggest mistake I have ever done in my woodworking career. Pouring the epoxy in here um, and just not using a coat of clear epoxy before just pouring it. This was probably by far the biggest mistake, especially on the sides and on the top and the bottom. Everything spilled over and well, what can what can you do with woodworking is a learning process and well Basically you're putting seven hundred dollars into the trash is my way of learning such a huge mistake What can you do? Let's make the best out of what we've got at the moment
I mean, it looks pretty nice still, um, apart from these spots. And I actually think that it looks rather cool that the epoxy traced out on the softer parts of the beach, so along those mold lines, basically. This is actually a very nice touch. But the thing is, with the black epoxy, it's going to look, well, pretty dominant. It has a really deep black color, which is going to stay in stark contrast with the whitish um, look or the yellowish look of the beach, especially at these spots. But I will see how it turns out at the very end. Let's make the best of it. I think we can all agree by now that I've done fucked it up big time. But it's just not my cup of tea to give up if something goes wrong. So I still tried my best to make the final product bearable to look at at least. Next up I did some simple cosmetics on the slab like trimming it to its final dimensions and chamfering all edges. I now did a tiny water pop just to see how it would look if I put some kind of finish on and yeah, well, what can you say? At this part it looks bearable, over here it's just rather annoying, it just looks really out of place. But well, well, we're going to try to bring a bit more off while sanding and I think I can still live with the result. Still, the wood looks absolutely stunning and yeah, we'll make the best out of it as mentioned before. I have no idea how this is possible, but this one feels on a whole different level than my Bosch router. Seriously! <laughs> what a product! Holy shit! This, this router... God, God, seriously. Such a good feel to your hands. Crazy. After nearly schmutzing my pants from arousal about the ridiculous performance of my new router, I proceeded to cut out a simple template slash jig for my table leg insert slots from MDF. Then I measured out the best positions where the legs should sit in, taped the jig to the slab and used the template bit to clear the slots for the legs. And after cleaning the corners with my chisel, I then marked the positions of my threaded inserts, drilled the respective holes, and screwed up big time again. Oh, you've got to be fucking shitting me. Seriously. <laughs> the threaded insert under the epoxy broke the top part of the epoxy. This table is pure bad luck. Okay, let me grab some black epoxy and then let's fill this hole up. Oh, goodness, I hate this table. Now, hold up. What happened to the workshop? Watch my workshop vlog to find out more, link down there in the description. But here's the long story short. After all these failures, I was just trying to forget about this project for a few months. I had other things to do like polishing up the workshop and the like. I think you can understand my frustration. But after gathering a bit more experience along the way, I finally felt confident to continue where I left off. Back then, I already knew that sported woods should be stabilized, since the wood is so soft. So I cleaned the top with washing alcohol to remove dust and everything else that gathered over the months on there and stabilized the whole slab with several layers of top poor clear epoxy. The very porous wood will absorb the resin and make the wood more stable and dense in the process. We will also be able to send everything to a very fine grid without removing too much of the sported wood in the process. Between all the coats I also sanded the surface smooth and flat again to remove all of these ripples that you were able to see here caused by the epoxy nut spreading evenly on a thin top pour. I also removed all the dust again with my washing alcohol and repeated pouring three coats in total for both the top and the bottom. And 
And now what do you look at that? In my opinion the simple process already made the top of the coffee table look way better than before we coated it. And now we are also about to enter the finish line. Starting the fine tuning off with sending the slab once again all the way from an 80 grit up to a 320. I also sanded all the edges and chamfer by hand and increased the grid to 400 on the end crane. Last but not least, it was time to not screw up at least once during this terrible, terrible dumpster fire of a woodworking project and fix the other leg in place too. And here comes the best part of it all. At first I cleaned the top with Ruby or Monocoat liquid cleaner and then proceeded to use natural colored Ruby or Monocoat for the first time in my life. I was really excited about finally trying out this finish in person and even grabbed my landlord to witness the sheer spiciness of this linseed coat together with me. And let me tell you, that shit is good! No matter how fucked up the project was along the way, Rubio sure managed to make it really, really bearable to look at. Holy shit, in person it looks so unreal, it's crazy. You have to see this Rubio monocoat in person. On the video it already looks amazing, but in person, seriously, I can't describe it. It just looks ridiculous, outright ridiculous. Holy shit, definitely worth the money. And after chising my pants, I waited about 30 minutes to buff the rest of the finish off with a soft padded attachment to my random orbital. and then also waited 24 hours before applying the finish to the bottom too. And then, after 9 months, this piece of shit was finally done. Let's get things straight. The table looks pretty cool. Everyone I asked did think that the epoxy staining was part of the wood and didn't even notice that something went wrong in the first place. But here's what bugs me. This project is just not what I imagined it would be and that is why I consider it a huge fail. If this would have been commissioned to work for a client, I would have started over and this would be a loss of about $1000 for the business. But gladly it's just a personal piece of furniture for my new home and it will always remind me what not to do with epoxy. I learned a lot of things from this one simple project and I hope you did so too. I'm really glad I was able to now learn from my mistakes and will apply my new knowledge to other projects in the hopes to get amazing pieces of furniture that I will be proud to present to my friends, family and also my online community. Up until then, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy this video and I'll see you soon. Take care and have a flammable day. Ciao!